Hi, this is Lance Edwards. And, and this is Randy Lipke. And this is Financial Independence, A Better Perspective. Randy, it's, you know, great to get back to doing some podcasts here with you. And I've, I, I, I've got a topic today. I think it's very popular. Matter of fact, I can't view it so popular. But today's topic, everyone, is what do you what do you do with your cash these days? What do you do with your cash? So, Randy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you lead on this one. I I'll, I'm gonna lead a little bit, Lance, but I want to turn this around right on you because you have been the master of cash flow, cash flow investments, buying properties that provide cash flow. Um, but I got to imagine with the real estate market turning the way it has in the last six to nine months, you have a lot of people sitting on cash. Is that a fair statement? Yes. And, the, and the, there is, there's a lot of cash. There's always uncertainty. Don't know what to do yeah. with it. And, and it wasn't too long ago. You wouldn't, you know, you could put it in a CD and make some sliver of a percentage off on of it. And, and kind of, I think people, I think people forgot about CDs, frankly, because there was nothing, you know, it was kind of a joke. There's nothing to it. And, uh, so yeah, a lot of people are sitting on cash and I think there's a lot of opportunities out, out there right now. And, and, and I'll tell you my, where I think they are. And then when you know, you're going to talk about some great thing, products you've got to know about is two places. Well, I'll tell you where I put my cash, uh, where it has been going is, and, and still does uh, universal life insurance policy that index life that you put me into mm -hmm. great, great thing, uh, great product. And because uh, it, it provides life insurance, it's an investment. It's got a floor on it. I can borrow money against it to buy apartment buildings, which goes toward the second place where I put my cash is in apartments is apartment projects. Cause we get a great, get a great ROI there. And, um, so that's, that's been the primary two places where I've been parking my cash, Randy. Okay. Um, so <laughs> you, you said it in your, in the, in your opening there that, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Right. And I've always said, you know, cash is king, just like <clears throat> the expression has been around for, you know, time and memoriam. Um, but I say that for two reasons, right. Um, cash you need to have when things go wrong, right? Uh, we can, you know, 2008 wasn't that long ago, right? We can remember when things went tremendously wrong in 2008 and, and people, you know, the word was that people were giving up their homes, but they really, you know, weren't, I should say losing their homes, but what they're really doing is giving them up, right? They're giving them back to the bank intentionally, right? And, and some, sometimes it's because they lost their job um, they were living on credit cards, you know, they were, they were strung out and they didn't have the cash reserves to, to, to carry them through the storm, right? But the other side, which is what you were just talking about, is you have to have cash on hand to take advantage of opportunities when they come along, right? You got to have yeah. that, that dry powder, right? Sitting on the, on the sideline. And uh, it's funny, you also said it wasn't that long ago um, that you could put money in a CD. Well, it was that, it was actually like 12 years ago. <laughs> We've had... <Yeah. laughs> We've had we've had low interest rates for that long, near you know zero or near zero, really, uh, going back to 2008. And you know, I can remember when I started my career in the mortgage business. I worked at a savings loan. Those are gone too, by the way. Savings loans are you know yep. gone the way of the dinosaur. But people would come in every week on Thursday because we changed the rates on the CDs. And these these retired people would, would you know just for the internet, really, they'd be out shopping around. They go from bank to bank to see what their CD rates were, and they'd move them for like a eighth of percent. But man, you could get four, <laughs> five, six. <laughs> you could you could get four, five, six, seven percent risk free on a CD um, at a bank, right? It was it was it was it was pretty amazing. And uh, fast forward today, blow all the way through two thousand eight, and blow up right now in twenty twenty three. It's happening again, right? So the you know the the news is is complaining like it always does about everything. Um, that the Federal Reserve has, you know, reserve, you know, jacked up, moved up rates, or moving up rates, or moving up rates, and nobody likes to borrow money for more, right? I mean, that's that's obviously the, the you know, the result of that. Or I have a credit card rates go up, but the flip side of that is, so the rates you can earn on safe investments. Again, we're back in that world again. That's what you and I were talking about the other day, right? Um, right. We. Right. So there's a there's a thing called the yield curve. Right. And so the, the curve works generally from short term, the shortest term 
um, interest rates to the longest term. So the longest term would be 30 years. That's how long your money would be tied up for. And then the shortest term would be like a, a, a T-bill, right? A one month T-bill some, you know, at that end. So normally I'm doing this, right? Normally that one month is down here and then that 30 years way up here. Well, the Fed jacked up interest rates short term because they don't anything to do with the long term directly. They did it again, they did it again, they did it again, they did it again. And the long term rates, They've gone up a little bit, but not nearly as much as the short-term rates. So I was looking at it this morning. You could get a three-month T-bill today insured by the federal government, and you're going to get 4.5% on it, risk-free, fee-free, 4.5%. I, I want to interject because I tell you what, I'm going I'm to share, I'm going to postulate most of our listeners do not know that fact. They right. do not know that fact because when you told me, I had no idea. It was doing like that. And so I, I'll kind of change my whole mindset. Four and a half percent, because I was used to, you know, 0.4 percent. Right. Uh, 0.04 percent. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, just, just your everyday cash, just set it aside. Just, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to move some cash over there, just some, some normal cash over there to set aside until the next project comes yeah. along. I mean, yeah, they, you know, you get $100,000, it's $4,000 a year, that's $300 a month, that's a car payment, right? And it's free, it's risk-free, right, at the short term. And how long will it go on? Uh, well, we don't really know for sure, but it's going to it's going to go on for at least another year, maybe more, right? So um, eventually what will happen, again, if assuming the 30-year doesn't go up anymore, and I don't really think it will, I think the 30-year is going to go down, and I think that the short term is going to go down too. Because once the Federal Reserve, they do, you know, this gray hair, I'm old enough to remember this a few times now, Federal Reserve over compensates they jack the rates up they start too late they jack them up too high then they hold them up too high for too long and throw us into a nice recession right and then they got to make up by you know firing the bullets in their gun and that's going to lower the rates back down but it doesn't happen overnight it seems like it does but it really doesn't we can watch this stuff in the news right every night and so you can you can go out today and you can go put your cash in a risk-free investment it doesn't have to be some crazy internet bank or anything you could be like i said directly with the federal reserve and um and get four and a half percent on your money risk-free right so it's a good alternative so how, how, how so give give the listener specifics where would you where would you direct them mm -hmm. to get into a four and a half percent it's three month t-bill basically correct is that what you said yeah, three month yeah. t-bill so there's a couple ways Backed to do it. U.S. government, how they do it. U.S. government, a couple ways to do it. Um, you can go right to the U.S. Treasury and buy a treasury bill. Treasury Direct, you know, doc, I think it's treasurydirect.com, but right to the U.S. Treasury. And you have, you have to buy the whole bill. So, you know, you're going to X amount of dollars um, and, uh, and you're going to own it. Right. And uh, they'll it's direct deposits. You can do an ACH from your checking account or your retirement account or whatever to the Treasury and they'll set you up on their account and you're going to own one, one of their T-bills. Now, the, the good news about that is there's no middleman. You're literally buying the treasury bill from the U.S. Treasury, right? Um, the downside is that, you know, it's not that liquid per se, because you still get your money tied mm -hmm. up for three months, right? Th you know, one month, three months, six months. Um, I got some clients going out as far as two years, by the way, because um, it's, it's funny, you can go up to about two years and then it gets, starts dropping off or flattening out. Uh, a 10 year, I think today was something like uh, two and a half percent or, or no, 10 years, like three and a quarter percent. So 10 years, three and a quarter percent. And here I got three months at four, four and a half. Right. So anyway, Treasury is the easiest is one way to do it. Simpler, easier way to do it is to put your money into an ETF. ETF is an acronym for exchange traded fund. And you can buy these directly through Charles Schwab, through Vanguard, through TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, doesn't matter. But the ETF that basically represents those treasury bills is called BIL, Bill, with one L, BIL. Okay. Okay, B no, what, BIL, no, what, I gotta, what does BIL stand for? What does that mean? Well, it's 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 the it's the QCIP, you know, the the it's the symbol for that ETF, mm -hmm. right? I know there's a lot of acronyms there, but so I can just go. You can go to um, go to your if you again Vanguard Schwab TD Ameritrade doesn't matter who you do it through. Type in the symbol BIL, 
and they'll give you a, a, the price. The quote's going to be somewhere around 90 bucks uh, uh, for a share of Bill. But what it is, this is what you're really asking, what does Bill own? Well, but Bill owns is one, two, and three-month D-bills. That's it, right? So, and, and the beauty of the, of the bill is um, they're liquid every day. So if that, if I, if I'm going to, if I'm a real estate guy, I mean, you know, this, I know this too, right? These, the real estate deals are, they come on out of nowhere and you got to be able to jump on them. Right. And you don't want your money tied up for three months. Right. You, Cause you want to be able to get at it. Well, how nice to be able to get pretty close to a three and a half percent return today, three point something percent return on it, on this bill. And I can cash it in tomorrow. Right. I can get my money out of this thing tomorrow. I, and I don't have to deal with the treasury. And I can do it in any dollar increment. I can do it for 25 bucks. I can do it for you know 2 million bucks. Whatever I want to do, I put it in bill. I buy it. And tomorrow, I can make it into cash. Get it out. But it sounds like you're paying kind of a you know relatively little hefty discount. If you can get 4.5% going straight to the treasury, and you, you're going to only get 3.5% going through the middleman. I mean, yep. that seems like a pretty deep discount to me. Because there can't be any management fees to it. I mean, there are hardly any. No. Hardly no, any. The, the, and the fee, remember, the rate return on bill is just representative of what the value of their one month, two month, and three month bills is. So it's changing all the time, right? As the one month, if they, if they have some one month and they have to manage liquidity. So, yeah, you're getting some shorter term, um, you know, one month T bills along with those three months. Three months, the sweet spot, right? Is the, in, in where, where you're getting the big return. But it's, it's the liquidity, Lance. That's, that's why you do it, right? So, you know, if you got a large chunk of money, maybe you put some of it in. Treasury direct three month T bills mm -hmm. or one year, two year, right? Because you know you can tie it up. But if you have, I don't know, it just I have my money in this in the bill. I like I like the ability to know that tomorrow, if I had an emergency come up, whether it was a bad thing or a good thing, I can you know call up the uh, trading desk and get my money out by the end of the day. I like that, and I'm willing to give up you know some rate of return um, in exchange for that liquidity, but I still have the safety. So all the major brokerages, online brokerages, you said, you know, Vanguard, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, uh, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, would Fidelity have these as well? Yep. The BI, yep. it's BIL, yep. type in BIL. Yep. yep. Well, that's, that's easy. That's super easy. And, yeah. um, and you don't have to go from bank to bank like those little guys did back in the, <laughs> in the late eighties looking for CD rates. You know, right? you know, you're really, you're really dating yourself with that savings and loan analogy and free uh, internet and free, free anything. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, but it's, it's been, it's been a, it's been a fun ride. I've been doing this for 35 plus years, you know, 36 years. So yeah, I, I, I've seen some things in my, in my day. I never, I never, I know the gray hair, right? Gives it away. <laughs> well, I think that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a new option for me. A new third option for me. Cause I've got some cash. It's waiting for the deal. You know, like I say, waiting for the next project to come along. Yeah. And you know, if I get three and a half, four, four and a half percent, okay, certainly go park yeah. it over there. And, um, and then when the project, then it's just purely liquid. I mean, that's, and like I say, I think, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, well, you can, like I say, it's been so many years, 12 years since we had any, any kind of respectable quote CD return. By the way, what are CDs paying these days? What, what, what kind of comparably, what would a one oh, year CD, you know, offhand? Yeah, I do. And I'm glad you asked that because some CDs are actually paying more um, than the market rate. So you can maybe even get a four or 5% CD, right? If you shop them, like bankrate.com is a good place to go to shop CDs. Um, and you don't actually buy them through bank rate, but they have all the CDs from all these different institutions around the country, right? And so why would a bank pay 5% when it, you know, it's above the, you know, the, the, the treasury rate? Well, it's because they want deposits, right? They want, they're going to buy deposits. And, and that's, that's, again, another good thing, right? Um, you're getting paid now. Instead of paying a premium for the liquidity like I am through Bill, you're getting paid by the bank to give you their money and tie it up. Right. And because and, they want those deposits. And so if you again, if you don't have the liquid uh, or you don't care about the liquidity, that's a good way to, to get good rates. And then, you know, just when you're doing that, this is a um, uh, kind of an X FTX related story. Right. The, you know, the crypto uh, folks, um, a lot of people thought that they were banking their money with FTX when they weren't. Um, this happens all the time or I should say all the time, but periodically that 
people think they're making a deposit right in an institution in a safe investment when it turns out you're really just investing with them on something they're doing and then of course in fds's excess case they were just you know plainly abusing everybody's money every which way they could right but you know again dating myself i remember lincoln national bank here in, in uh Orange County, California, uh, back in the late 80s, you could go into the bank and it was a real bank, right, with walls and everything. And, and you could buy a CD at one rate or you could buy their Lincoln, I forget what they called it, but it was really a Lincoln investment. But because people were in the bank and they were greedy, they wanted that extra return on Lincoln's. But when Lincoln went into foreclosure, all that money was lost, no FDIC insurance. And so that's my point. If you're gonna be shopping the CDs on bank rate, you want to make sure you're getting them from an FDIC insured institution, um, and um, and and then and then you're, you're you'll be safe, right? With with the rate that you're getting. That's a great point. Yeah, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. So, all right. So, uh, if someone puts their money into the CD, it's a one-year CD, and but you know, and they've been they're going to get let's say five percent for argument's sake. You're going to get five percent on a one-year CD. Mm -hmm. Six months down the road, by gosh, got to get that money back out. What kind of penalty are they going to pay to get it back out? To completely lose their 5%, you know, the 5% they've been earning or a piece of it or how's that? Yeah. Work? Yeah. Typically, that's what I see these days is they lose all the interest that they would have otherwise earned. So the interest is accruing. And right? if you walk out early, you're going to leave all that interest behind, which isn't bad, right? Because in the old days, you used to not only lose the interest, but you get a penalty on top of that, right? Um, Right. So, they, yeah, they, they call them liquid CDs. But again, you basically gave your bank the money for a period of time and they gave you nothing back in return. And, you know, that's how they <laughs> make money. <laughs> yeah, liquid CD. You earn nothing, but it's liquid. Yeah, we, we took your cash. And gave but we right get to give to all. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. It's like, here, you can have this, but we're going to take that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that's typically what you're going to give up. And the terms will be there. It'll be easy to understand it. Again, just FDIC insured institution. Make sure you're getting an FDIC insured investment when you go the CD route. That's a, a certificate deposit. That's all it means. There, it's a no. So some, yeah, let's talk about this. So, by the way, I was at a conference um, two months ago. And real estate conference and the topic of self directed IRAs came up and there was representative there from one of the large, I'm not going to say their name, but one of the large self-directed administrator companies, one of the large ones in the country. Okay. And somehow this came up and he stood up and he volunteered this statistic. He said that 97% of their account holders who hold self directed IRAs are sitting in cash. 90 meaning they're making zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. So for anybody with a self-directed IRA who you don't know where to put it, and I, I think the main reason that people don't know, don't know where to put it, et cetera, they don't, don't understand the mechanics, well, put it in one of these T-bills or put it in a CD. Mm -hmm. Now you can find a place for it. Well, certainly one place, like a no-brainer. Or I want to throw this out. Another option is you can go invest, and then you get some other funds, other places to invest. You can invest it in real estate through other people's real estate, through other people's funds, either, mm -hmm. you know, through, through private loans. And that's, you know, when I put my cash into a real estate, it's going directly into real estate or it's going into my fund. I have a fund now oh. where people can, can invest in the fund and, and basically goes into the projects, paying, paying them a return uh, passively, 100% passive, 100% passive. So I would- wow. That's a really good alternative, but that's probably illiquid, right? That the fund is probably that's illiquid. That's illiquid. So that's 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 the trade-off. So you and and you're going to make, you know, my fund pays twelve to eighteen percent. Wow. But it's but it's uh it's it's not as liquid. It's not it's not a mutual. You know you know you don't put it in this month and come back ninety days and say you know I need my money back. Well that that money's sitting in a an apartment building over here. But right. it's for longer term. And frankly, most of my I would I should add to do the math, but probably 80% of my investors, Brandy, or self directed IRA. Yeah. People with self directed IRA that were sitting in cash, has been sitting in cash for years, earning nothing, and they put it 
into place, but it's a long-term investment. It's not, it's a self directed IRA. So t- typically IRAs are not emergency cash situations. They're more, you know, they're for retirement, retirement yeah. they're planning for account. So, yeah. so they're looking for a long-term. So that's, an, that's another option for people is now you can get, I call them alternative investments, but you're trading off the liquidity. Yeah, and it, it, you, trigger, you trigger two more thoughts in my mind about that. Um, you know, one, when you when you have investments <clears throat> in self-directed IRAs and you own real estate, you're, it's your investment. You own it, right? It's you don't have to worry about the institution that your custodian collapsing and then you losing your investment because it's still your investment. They're just the custodian, right? Correct. If you have it in cash <clears throat> in that custodian, you do have to worry about that custodian collapsing. Okay, right? And, and so keeping cash at a custodian is really not a good idea. And I've seen it happen at least two or three times in my lifetime where these custodians have for, you know, f- f- gone under, gone into foreclosure, and people with cash lost it all, right? Because it was part of the, you know, the, the, li- the liquidation. And then the ones that, of course, owned other assets like real estate or apartment or whatever, that was theirs, right? And they, they got to keep their asset because they weren't invested in cash. So that's one thing. I, I don't like keeping cash with a self-directed custodian. I like getting it out of there anyway. But the other thing is when you're doing this with IRAs and Roth IRAs or 401ks or whatever, you have to make sure when you take the money out that you transfer it from that custodian into the new custodian directly. And it has to be in the exact type of same account. So if I have a Roth self-directed IRA with my self-directed custodian, I want to have a Roth IRA at TD Ameritrade and the, or, or at the bank. If I'm going to transfer it to the bank with a CD, I'm going to open a Roth CD with the bank. So I'm not going to withdraw the money from my self-directed account subject it to potential taxes, right? I want to do custodian to custodian, same account to same account. So in my world, I have, I have a self-directed Roth. I have a self-directed IRA. I have a same thing. I have a self-directed 401k and a, and a Roth 401k, all self-directed. And then I have corresponding four more accounts over at TD Ameritrade for my 401k, my IRA, my Roth, and so on. And now I can move funds back and forth between the two and never pay taxes on them. But you, this, this point you just raised, I would dare say most people don't even think about that, that they're, they think of their IRA administrator like a bank, you know, yeah, that it's they're a not. bank, and 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 it's FDIC insured. It's nowhere near an FDIC being insured. It's uh, some you're are. right. Some, so there's, there's, some, there's, some some have FDIC insurance, but most don't. Most are just custodians. But here's the thing, you know, there's nothing else. There's a reason to get your money out of that self directed IRA. Get it into something that is insured, like uh, well, a T bill certainly. Now, if you if you go to the the bill, the BIL. Mm-hmm. Are those going to be insured? There, there's there's securities, so they have the securities deal, you know, SPIC insurance, right? But the the real fundamental insurance in a bill is that it's one to it's one to three month treasury bills. It's insured by the federal government, right? And and again, if the custodian can go completely out of business, you own those bills, right? You own the bill, you're fine, you're totally fine, right? But it's not like cash. Because cash is cash, and cash is, you know, could be part of the liquidation of of the of the uh, of that custodian. And I've seen it happen, and people lost money. They actually lost money in their self-directed account because it was sitting there in cash and not invested in real estate or gold or whatever it is they wanted to invest in. All right, there's another reason to get that money moving. That get, the, get it out clear. of there. It's, yeah, it's not just it's not just zero. You're it's not just zero. You're making is. It's, it's possibly a negative ROI you're going to make on it. Of course, if you lose it, it's, 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 you know, there's some risk involved, but it's sitting there in an uninsured, privately held company, basically, that's holding your cash. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. Yeah, and again, I've seen it happen. This is not just you know theoretical. I've seen it happen, and people have lost lots of money because of it. All right. No. So that's a great discussion of cash. I just want to wrap up with one thing because, um, again, as a real estate investor, would you think is this is is this a, are we in a buyer's market now, or are we still in this this kind of neutral zone, seller buyer? What are, what do you think? We we are clearly trending to a buyer's market. It hasn't yet built up steam yet, but it's going to. Um, 
<clears throat> and we can talk about that, but it's, there's some, some factors that are going to start happening that are going to really shift it into high gear. Well, we're seeing it now. I saw we saw that God, who was there was a, in the news week before last. Uh, someone who was in the um, held a big real estate fund. They had they had defaulted on a 481 million dollar loan because they had, they had an adjustable rate mortgage, floating rate mortgage, and it had reset on them, and it was no longer cash flowing, and they couldn't refinance out, so they had gotten into trouble. So I think we're going to see more of that as it ramps up, probably going into Q2. I think certainly going into Q2, but right now it's it's a buyer's market. Now is not the time to be selling because interest rates are are up. Mm-hmm. And but, but you, I'm selectively buying. I've got a project right now, trying to get it uh, get it on the, across the wire that we're buying it on seller financing, Randy. And I'm getting kind of here's the idea. That, you know that they they should have you know, they should have listed it. You know six nine months ago when interest sure. rates were low. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> they waited I? now. Should have. They should have. Yeah. They should have would have. And. And so I basically approached them and said, okay, listen, I'll give you your price of say nine months ago, but you've got to agree to give me the interest rates of nine months ago on seller financing. I said, okay. So I've taken over the payment that I've got the underlying loan at 4.25% that the bank's going to allow me to take over the payments on that. I'm going to put in place a second at a low interest rate as well. So, and we'll get a, you know, get a long balloon on it. So I can just, enjoy the cash flow until things go back to that long, you know, that long yield curve, interest rates come back down in the future, then I'll refine right. my way out. But those are the deals that are being done right now because otherwise, you know, they're, sellers can't get the prices they want if you have to go pay today's interest rates. So there's, there's well, those opportunities out there right now. So let, let's dig down on this in another podcast, but I, I want to talk about, you know, is it a good time to buy real estate or not? Let's do that on, on like our next podcast. I love okay. it. I love it. All Excellent. right. This is great. This is great, Lance. I think this is a wrap. You agree? Yeah. Yeah. So everyone, I think that's really good. And um, so everyone, remember, if you want to see the show notes uh, and get access to all kinds of good materials we got for you, go to fibetter.com, fibetter.com. Or if you want to check out my stuff, go to lanceedwards.com. And Randy, if they want to check out, avail themselves of your services, tell them where they go for your, your website. Our website is lifetimeparadigm.com. And I'll spell that out for you. Lifetime is pretty easy, L-I-F-E-T-I-M-E. The paradigm is P-A-R-A-D-I-G, like George, M like Mary.com. Lifetimeparadigm.com. You'll see a lot of good information there, a lot of uh, free information. And be sure to enroll in our financial independence toolkit. It's free. It's awesome. Lots of good, uh, lots of good stuff there. So lifetimeparadigm.com, Lance. That's where they go. All right. Till the next time. Go go right. go put that cash go put that cash to work. Take care. Everybody. Put it to work, buddy. Take care. Bye for now.